Over the past few days, there's been quite a bit of drama in the ashes of creation community. What started the recent community divide was a video from Lucky Ghost. And from what little I do know of him, he's an overall good guy. He mainly covers the general MMO topic videos, but also the Elder Scrolls Online, which is actually the main game that I play. He mainly covers the PvE aspect of the game like dungeons and solo arenas, while I on the other hand focus on the PvP aspect of ESO. First, let me lay the foundation of this video so you have a clear understanding and perspective of what I'm trying to achieve. I'm not here to bash any other content creator. This is merely my opinion and insight of something I see being a potential problem in the here and now but also in the future for Ashes of Creation. After talking to Lucky Ghost about his recent video in his comment section, I finally got a clear picture of what he was trying to accomplish. However, I disagreed greatly with the implementation, the execution, the fear mongering, and the excluding of foundational details about the flagging system and other core foundational aspects. That I think the average viewer keeping up with the game probably wouldn't know and is very pertinent to the understanding of the game's foundation. If you guys have no idea about what the flagging system even is in Ashes of Creation, I did a video a few days ago talking about kind of why I'm excited and I go in depth to, to some degree about the flagging system, but I will be doing a separate video altogether just going in depth on everything we know so far. But also you can check out the Ashes of Creation wiki and I'll link all those down in the description below. The reason why I'm making this video is I fear that misinformation about the game not even in its Alpha 2 stage yet can be detrimental to the overall perception and success the game has. With that being said, I scrolled through Lucky's video, all 1700 comments at that time, and I seen comment after comment after comment of people falling victim to some of the misinformation, the skewed perception, and not getting a thorough enough explanation of the system in Ashes. The video was based on an experience from an MMO from 20 years ago that had similar systems to Ashes of Creation, but not a, a direct one-to-one -one correlation. While similar, Ashes of Creation also builds upon a lot of the flaws of Lineage 2 systems. So my goal in this video is to clear up a lot of the mess of assumptions and flaws about the system, while also trying to be unbiased as possible and paint an accurate picture and representation of what this game actually is. So first, let's get some knowledge and general understanding out of the way. Ashes of Creation is a PVX system, meaning it is a blend of both PvP and PvE. If you hate PvP with a gut-wrenching passion and despise any combat between another player whatsoever, then yes, you can stop watching this video. You will not like Ashes of Creation because PvP is a foundational pillar where every single system in this game depends on this PvX environment. However, if you don't mind PvP or are indifferent to it, then I think Ashes of Creation can be your MMO. Also, Ashes of Creation is a sandbox MMO, not a theme park MMO, like most of the modern age MMOs today. These are basically polar opposites. Theme park is exactly what you would think it is, one with pre-built rides designed by the developer for consumption by the player in an orderly fashion. These rides tend to look like quest hubs, different zones, dungeons, raids, and the like. On the contrary, a sandbox MMO is a style of game in which minimal character limitations are placed on the gamer, allowing them to roam and change a virtual world around them. Players make their own story in this type of environment, not a predefined script of actions like in a theme park. You are the story. You decide how you interact with others in this world. In this PVX sandbox, it will also inspire unlikely alliances and friendships that typically outside of the system simply wouldn't exist. Take for example, if you are strictly a PvP or a PvE player in other MMOs, how often do you actually interact with the opposite player type? Possibly when trading materials or doing their preferred activity, but in most situations, not very often. In Ashes, PvP and PvE are symbiotic. They depend on each other. Building upon that, you then add in some of the social elements with guilds and citizenships of nodes. You then have an ecosystem of opportunity where you can choose good or evil where there is endless possible outcomes of interaction. In this player-driven world, there will be lots of opportunities to be evil or self-serving or anti-hero. There will be plenty of conflicts and wars to exploit and lots of guilt with differing goals, some of which could be described as evil or at least war hungry. But just as you are allowed to do bad, other players are allowed to try and stop you. The corruption system in particular is designed to make the outlaw playstyle more risky. It causes you to become corrupted if you kill innocents. And if you're corrupted, you suffer massive amounts of penalties. So just a few of them is four times penalty of death, such as losing your loot and XP loss. 
And don't take this lightly either. As you lose XP, you have to then grind that back to become effective again, forcing you to possibly grind for even hours. On top of that, being corrupted has a chance of dropping your equipped gear and weapons when you die, which can be even more devastating to a character's progression. And that is not everything that happens when you're corrupted. These are just a few highlight points. On top of all of that, you have bounty hunters that will exist that will track down corrupted players for rewards. In this type of system, it creates drama and social interaction between other players. And this will produce in each and every server a different outcome, a different bad guy, a different good guy, and every server will be different. Being corrupted is not the only form of PvP in Ashes of Creation. There are many others that will be possible without penalty. Caravans in particular make for lucrative targets. Caravans exist just to set up those PvP opportunities in the open world. Attacker versus Defender, Bandit versus Guard, Evil versus Good, Rebel versus Tyrant, not to mention Node and Castle Sieges as well. There should be all kinds of different opportunities and ways to show your true colors in this game, assuming that Intrepid Studios follows through with their original vision. All right, so let's switch gears here and let's talk about Lucky Ghost's main claim and the reason why he made his video on why this is the single biggest problem Ashes of Creation faces. But I also, uh, we're gonna get into my perspective here in a minute, but from what I gathered is if you are a green player and you're in like in a dungeon, you're gathering flowers, you're chopping trees, whatever you're doing, and somebody comes along and wants to be an overall annoying nuisance to you and they're just gonna lie attack you. They're just going to hit you with some dots. They're just going to be an overall nuisance to you. They're not going to go red because they're not going to kill you. They're just going to stay purple and they're just going to be an annoying pest to you is, is the way he's describing it. I could see from where he's coming from. However, I think that that's looking at it in a two-dimensional type of sense. I just think that that type of hypothetical situation for one is a little bit disingenuous because everything's not cut and dry like that. And for two, uh, it doesn't have enough context to it. Like, what happened last week between those two types of players? What happened the other day? Did that person uh, uh, grief somebody else or, or vice versa? Whatever the case is, there's just, there's just so many different hypothetical situations that we, we don't exactly know what's happened, right? I think that that's, that's why I'm looking at this from a three-dimensional perspective rather than black and white cut and dry. From my perspective, there's a few different hypothetical situations I would like to raise. The first one is, what if those same people that player one and player two, player two is griefing player one, but what if those two people are from the same node and the same organization? Why in the world would player two attack player one and want to grief them when they're working to the same common goal of their node system and trying to upgrade it and trying to level it up and trying to be the next powerhouse on said server. Let's go for a minute and say that they're doing it because they want to be mean. They would just, they, they're going, they, they just want to do it. They just want to be an absolute pest. Why in the world would a governor want to allow those type of people in their node? If player two is being overall pest, couldn't they be kicked out of said node and the governor relinquish their citizenship to that node? I think that there's there's so many different levels and, and nuances to this that just saying that player two is just wanted to be mean to player one, this increases that social aspect of Ashes of Creation that no other MMO has. But what if they are from different nodes? What if they're one, one player's from node A and one player's from node B? They are enemies, are they not? Because it is a PVX type of environment. So then what if player one's like, okay, hey, this guy from node, uh, B is attacking me. Can we send some reinforcements over here and let's kind of kick them out, try to get them back to where they're going to, where, where he can leave me alone? That's again, the social aspect that I think that this example doesn't really satisfy enough, in my opinion. And that's going to lead to what? A social conflict. And what could that lead lead to? A, a node war where you have, you know, you, you want these people to get out, get out of your backyard, so to speak. And now you're going to have to, you know, you go to your governor and say like, hey, this guy's attacking me. Uh, what can we do about it? Send reinforcements. The PvPers come in and come and kill him. Then that person calls in reinforcements. And then now there's a little a little war inside of that um, dungeon or whatever the case is. And then comes 3 o'clock uh, the next day. And now they're in a node war. Now they're going to be attacking each other. Just from that one singular aspect of the player 2 was griefing player 1. Now becomes a social conflict to where there's enemy versus enemy. And that, in my opinion, is so much more valuable to the meaning of the game than having a system where it's opt-out PvP, where you could just turn off PvP and don't have to worry about it. Because, again, this brings me back to my other conclusion that I made, where 
when does PvP players and PvE players really interact other than trading goods and that's it? They really don't, unless they're doing their, their preferred activity, like doing a dungeon or a PvE players comes and does PvP. Let's go a little bit deeper into this rabbit hole. What if the player one is an artisan and they've been getting griefed and they've been playing solo for a while and they got tired of it? They can have a few options. They can get better at PvP and attack the guy back and kill him. Or two, they could hire PvP players to come protect him which would make it lucrative to be a PvP player, but also defend the people of your node from other people of other nodes. I think that situation right there is Steven's vision and dream for the Ashes of Creation social construct uh, to, to have meaningful interactions where it's not just, oh, you picked this alliance, so you have to be at war with the blue and the red team. No, it's a very, very in-depth and it has a lot of drama associated with it. Um, there's a lot of history between it. You know, this guild hates this guild because somebody did this this long ago, but now that they're gonna be friends now because they have to, you know, try to fight off this other larger guild for just a little bit. Like the enemy of my enemy is my friend. You never heard of that saying? I think that that's Steven's vision of Ashes of Creation. And as soon as you cut off the opts out, no PVP system, that is completely gone from the social construct because again why does why don't pvp players interact with pve players or vice versa because they have nothing in common no common vested interest no common goal this system allows for that vested interest and common goal that no other system allows for uh in any game uh, that i've seen in the past 20 years instead of just a few people like four or five let's increase it to 50. say you have group a from node a and group B from node B, they are a part of the same guild. So they are they are sworn enemies pretty much, or you know, they're fighting for the same resources, they're going for the same, you know, drops from bosses and whatnot. And say group A is wanting to stay green, but group B is wanting to go purple to fight group A uh, for the spot. Is it then wrong for group B to maybe cause a guild war uh, against um, guild A? Is that griefing considered at that point? What if, for example, group B kills group A and then group A comes back to try to fight them again, try to come back and kill the boss, whatever the case is. Is that griefing if group B then wipes them again? I don't think so. I think that this is part of the whole social structure of Ashes of Creation, allowing for these type of interactions. Not everybody's gonna win all the time. I'm sure there's gonna be some times that uh, Guild A wins and beats Guild B. I mean, if you wanna go to the extreme of the most extreme, say you have the most sweatiest strongest guild of all time the, the, in, in the entire server and they are they are wanting to hold down a dungeon okay but say there's like four other guilds that are like hey we don't like these guys they're being very toxic whatever the case is why can't they group up together and start a node war at their node so now th that group b the toxic people so to speak have to choose between defending that dungeon if it's if it's actually lucrative uh, that's still another hypothetical situation we don't even know of if dungeons are even going to be worth holding to that degree. But then they have to choose between defending said dungeon or defending their node. They're obviously going to defend their node. So then that leaves an opportunity, for example, for other people to go into that dungeon to do it and to kill the boss and to get drops, find resources. There's so many different things that I, I think that a lot of the examples provided don't provide enough context to a situation. Now, if some ways just be an absolute just butt face to somebody obviously that's not right but again if they are a part of a different um node and guild i mean that's just the pvx environment you have to realize ashes of creation is not a solo mmo it's not like final fantasy it's not like eso where you could just go in and go into a public dungeon and do it by yourself you actually have to cooperate and be social in an mmo like ashes of creation i definitely understand some of the fears about people and not and being afraid of PvP to some degree. I personally think PvP is the most fun thing you can you can do in a game. I mean, you can fight AI in a single player game all day long. You can go do all these other MMOs like Final Fantasy, ESO. A lot of them have that solo type of interaction that you don't really have to coordinate with other people. Ashes of Creation is doing things different and that's something that I personally enjoy and I'm looking forward to. So one final thing I'd like to talk about, uh, something that's been kind of bothering me for a while, especially, you know, me coming in and taking a really in-depth look at Ashes of Creation and how much different it's going to be compared to every other MMO out there is everybody says that every other MMO is dying. You know, you got WoW, Final Fantasy, ESO. Why in the world would you want the same systems to be in Ashes of Creation 
when this is the only game doing something different than every other MMO out there? Is it that people want a reskin of WoW? They want the exact same thing, but it's gonna have the same problems if you have the exact same reskin. So doing something different, yeah, you're gonna have different problems, but you quite possibly could have different outcomes as well, where it's not just the same, you know, oh, let's add this thing to the cash shop and let's not really add any new content. You know, looking at ESO from a PVP perspective is they started out as a really a PVP focused MMO was, yeah, there was PVE as well, but it was a 50-50 split. And now it's it's 95-5 if, we, if we're lucky from a PVP perspective. And you could argue, yes, ESO's main player base is a casual audience as well, which I would definitely agree with and would be fine with. As long as Ashes of Creation can go to the same vision and the same direction um, that Steven uh, and his team has for Ashes of Creations. Is like if every other MMO was dying, why make Ashes of Creation like every other MMO. I know that's just something that's bothered me for a while. I'm definitely curious on your guys' thoughts on, on a lot of my examples. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, am I wrong? Am I right? What do you guys think? PvP players, PvE players, let me know your thoughts. Please be constructive. I'm not attacking anybody. Just providing my opinion and my thoughts. So if you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, you know, you learned something, I'll be sure to like and subscribe. And I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.